Hi, Steve Stein from Lesson Face here, and welcome to Achieving Absolute Fretboard Mastery Part 3. Um, this month, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down the notes of the fourth string. So let's go ahead and start there, and then we'll go through everything else. Okay, so when you pluck your fourth string, the note you hear is D. Okay, so you have D. Now we've been talking about how we're using the odd numbers or the, the dots on the guitar to memorize our notes. So we've done the sixth string and the fifth string, and we've cross-referenced those, so we should know those really well by now. Now we're simply adding on the fourth string. So the fourth string, you've got D. So if you go to the second fret, you've got E. So it doesn't line up with the first fret, okay? It lines up on the second fret, similar to the fifth string. So we have D, E, and now we're on dots. We're on F, G, A. Now the difference here is, is that we don't surround the last dot like we did on the sixth and the fifth strings. B is actually on the ninth fret. And then C is on the 10th fret. So if you compare the 5th and 4th strings together in terms of visualization, they start off exactly the same, having first open, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, but then you go to 9 and 10. So that's where things change. So the notes are D, E, F at the 3rd fret, G at the 5th fret, A, and then B at the 9th fret, and C at the 10th fret, and then of course D all over at the 12th fret. So what we want to do is memorize those notes, and then again cross-reference those with the 6th and the 5th strings so we know where all the notes are on all three of those strings. Okay, now again, the way I'm teaching you this, I'm trying to avoid at this point sharps and flats simply because I want you to learn the prime uh, pitches, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And then that way, if you want a sharp or a flat, you simply move her up or down from there. Um, and if you've been watching my other videos, the reason I, I started doing this with a lot of my students is because I would tell them to go home and memorize all 12 notes and explain how that works, but most people just weren't doing it. And even if they were doing it, they weren't doing it to absolution, to, to really knowing it. So that's when I started trying to simplify the concept and just go, okay, well, where's, where's this note? Where's D? Where's E? Where's F? Where's G? Um, and so that's what I want you to do. So let's say, for instance, you have this note, which is E. Okay? You'd want to know where E is on the fourth string, E is on the fifth string, and then E is on the sixth string, which is either 8 or 12. Okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to, again, learn the notes on the fourth string, cross-reference those with the fifth and the sixth strings. Um, but one other little shortcut I want you to see as well, since you already know how to play bar chords and power chords from the previous um, uh, lessons I've done, or, or whatever you learn them from, is that whenever you're on the sixth string, let's say you're on the fifth fret of the sixth string, its octave is on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Okay, so if this note right here on the sixth string is A, Okay. The note on the 4th string 7th fret is also A. So that's another way you can visualize the 4th string. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't learn them, because you should. But you can visualize them off of the 6th string, or vice versa. So if you were on this note on the 4th string, which is the 5th fret, this note is G. G, G. But you could also know that by cross-referencing the 6th string, 2 frets lower, Okay, those are octaves. And of course, we've learned that from our pentatonic scales and things like that as well. So there's, you're kind of seeing how they all sort of connect together. This kind of circle of, of information that just keeps going around. We're connecting all these pieces together. So that's the first thing we're going to do is memorize those notes on the fourth string. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about the blue note to make our pentatonic major and pentatonic minor into blues scales. Now, the blue note is one single note that we add into the pentatonic, or the five notes. Okay, so if I take, and again, go to A on the sixth string, and play this, there's my notes, one, two, three, four, five, of the pentatonic, and then, of course, the octaves, which we just talked about. Okay, the blue note exists right there, okay? This is called a flat five. What I'm doing is, and again, that, that'll come in the theory that we'll be doing a little bit later in, in um, in this, this uh, series that we're covering. But what you're doing is you're adding your middle finger on the fifth string in between the fifth and seventh frets. That note right there on the sixth fret is what we refer to as a blue note, okay? Now in blues, the blue note is an essential note that we have to try and utilize. The problem with it is, is that if you try and emphasize the blue note, you get a diminished sound, and so it sounds really awkward. 
So what we do is we use that blue note in conjunction with other notes. Think of it almost as a passing tone where we're moving across it. So if I was playing a pattern or a lick or just moving around meandering, I'm gonna use it in conjunction with other notes, but it's not my target note. See, so if I was in the key of A, one of the notes of course I'd be targeting would be A. Okay, so as I'm moving around, instead of just playing pentatonic, now what I can do is I can add in that blue note. Okay. There's lots of different ways. Again, we haven't started talking about the actual licks and patterns of, of soloing yet. We're just trying to get our fretboards set up here, but what we want to be able to do is start utilizing that in our meandering. <laughs> See? So it sounds really cool. Now, that note also has an octave in this position. So if I was sitting in this first position here, I can keep going through the scale, and it's going to wind up here as well. It's going to wind up on the eighth fret of the third string. And you can see how it really adds some nice color to your normal pentatonic scale. Okay. Now, that blue note, obviously we would utilize that if we were soloing over blues, but can we use it over other things? Of course we can. Okay, we can use it in rock scenarios, and, and again, that's another one of the series that, that's coming up, is talking about how to realistically approach all of these things that we're learning. Um, not only from a theoretical standpoint, but just from a, a, a street rock and roll perspective of what do you use and when do you use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start utilizing that blue note in all five positions of the minor pentatonic. So I want you to start memorizing where that is in all five positions. And again, that will be uh, we'll have a, a picture of that so you can you can start memorizing those. We can also add a blue note into the major pentatonic side of things. So the major pentatonic again, if you remember, I'm moving down three frets. So if I was in A, I'm moving down one, two, three to the second fret which is F sharp, but my pinky winds up on A. Okay. So here, it's gonna wind up visually in the same spot. Right here, it was right between those two fingers. Okay, well here, it's also between those two fingers. It's just theoretically functioning different. Okay, we call this a raised second or a flat third, um, a minor third. There's lots of different things that we can call it, but what I want you to do is see how when you're playing minor pentatonic and major pentatonic, visually they're the same thing. <laughs> Now remember, when you're in major, your A is over here. You're not looking for F sharp, you're looking for A. So you see how I can utilize that in my playing, and again, it adds a little more spice, a little more color into what I'm doing. So we're gonna memorize that blue note in all five positions, both minor and major pentatonic. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about the meandering concept. We're gonna, we're gonna develop that a bit further. And the way we're gonna do that is uh, a, a technique I call the rhythm pyramid, okay? And what a rhythm pyramid is, is when we think about the lowest part of the pyramid, it's very large and the top part is very small. So when we talk about soloing or, or anything really that we're doing on guitar, the, the two things that we're basing everything off is rhythm and pitch, okay? Well, rhythms are whole notes and half notes and quarter notes and eighth notes and 16th notes and all kinds of different things like that. And sometimes that gets confusing for people. So what I want you to think about is how really when we talk about rhythm, the, the basic element of what rhythm is, a whole note is worth four beats. A half note is worth two. A quarter note is worth one. An eighth note is worth a half. A sixteenth note is worth a, a fourth. So all that's happening is every time we bump up this rhythm pyramid, we're going twice as fast as the last count. So for instance, if I was just to play the note on the seventh fret of the fourth string, I'm gonna do a whole note, I'd have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Half notes, I'd be going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Quarter notes, I'd be going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Eighth notes, it gets a little more challenging. There you're going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. 16th notes, you're going one, two, three, four, 
right? So it's going even faster. So as you approach the top part of the pyramid, obviously things get more technically challenging. Okay, now it doesn't have to end at 16th notes, you can keep going as fast as humanly possible, but that's the, the basic premise. So what we've been doing is we've been learning how to meander without stopping. <laughs> Not really playing very musical, but, but trying to get comfortable with just moving around. And then what we started doing is adding in some pauses where we actually get to the end of something. And this is what we're going to elaborate on today. Okay, so if I was doing this meandering idea, like we've been talking about before. Now what I, I know I can do two things to create a phrase, the, the basic essentials of what a phrase is. The first thing is I can pause on a note. And the second thing is I can physically stop playing. Okay, so now all of a sudden to create the phrase concept, what I'm doing is I'm deciding how long my phrase is going to be or how short my phrase is going to be. So right now we're still doing the meandering as before where we're keeping the same speed of notes. So if I'm going, I'm trying not to stop, I just keep going, it doesn't matter what order, I'm just trying to keep my brain thinking the entire time. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about pausing. So I might go. Stop. 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 Or pause, I should say. Now I stop. Again, pause. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to just create some space. So I'm going to start creating some phrases. The better I get at this, the less of just constant meandering I can do. And now I can actually start adding some, some pauses. And you start noticing as I do that, it's going to start sounding a bit more like music is actually supposed to sound. So I'm meandering aimlessly like I was doing before, but now what I'm doing is I'm adding in some pauses or some stops. And the better I get with that, I want to really start focusing on how long or short they actually are. So all of a sudden this, this sort of brainless uh, meandering is going to slowly start becoming something that sounds a bit more like music. Okay, so phrasing is really important to get used to how to feel, how long to play, and when to stop. Now, we're not worried about what notes we're stopping on. We'll get to all of those sorts of things, but right now, we're simply trying to get used to being able to pause, okay? You're noticing I'm adding in some of the techniques like vibratos and things like that. I'm, I'm beginning to bring some of that back in because now I can. I'm actually stopping or pausing sometimes, okay? So the rhythm pyramid, if we bring in that idea, what's happening then is instead of just moving the same speed the entire time, now what I can start doing is going. See, now what I'm doing is I'm meandering. But because I can start using whole notes or half notes or quarter notes or eighth notes, dun 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 all of a sudden it sounds even more like music. And that's what I'm looking for. So instead of just thinking about soloing as a bunch of different licks that you tie together, and don't get me wrong, we need licks, this ability to be able to move between positions and create phrases is really important, okay? Now again, coming up real soon, we're gonna start talking about notes to emphasize and, and how to follow chords around and all kinds of different things. All of this stuff is coming. But right now, I just want you to start getting used to being able to create different phrases using different rhythms from your pyramid, okay? And learning how to pause or learning how to physically stop playing. The nice thing about stopping playing is that it gives you an opportunity to go somewhere else. So if you were going, now I'm free. I can go wherever I want. You know, whatever it might be doing. Okay, now from the technical side, what I want you to do is go back, there's a Guitar World video called Three Steps to Shred that I did, a fundamental daily practice. I want you to find that video and I want you to make sure that you're practicing that. That's going to be your technique side of our practice for this month, okay? So what you're focusing on this month is the notes on your fourth string, cross-referencing those with all the notes on the fifth and the sixth strings, 
you're adding the blue note now, which you can certainly use in your meandering, on the minor pentatonic side, on the major pentatonic side. Okay, you're beginning to think about the rhythm pyramid and how we're moving from slower to faster by simply doubling the speed every time. Whole note to half note, half note to quarter note, quarter note to eighth note, okay? And then you're starting to utilize that within the context of your meandering. So the two new things we're doing with meandering, of course, is uh, pausing or stopping to create a phrase idea. And the other thing is, is we're using that rhythm pyramid to try and create some um, uniqueness and, and obviously just general soloing, you know, melodic sense by, by using things that aren't just the same thing over and over and over. You know, now we're doing... Okay? So the more you do all of these things, the more comfortable your entire fretboard is going to get, but now the more musical things are going to begin to sound. Then from a technical standpoint, you're going to start using that three steps to shred video that I did for Guitar World a while back. So, good luck with this month, and I will see you next month. Make sure you let me know through Lesson Face if you have any questions about anything. I'd be more than happy to help you.